Hey everybody, welcome back to the Armed Scotsman. Today on the table we have a Delton AR-15. Let's get this one going. All right, folks, as I said, we have a Delton AR-15. I hope I'm saying that, Delton, uh, right? But this is an AR-15. Um, the reason I picked it up um, is because of the price point. Now, I realize there is a huge amount of um, budget-friendly AR-15s out there. Um, this is actually the cheapest AR-15 that I've ever bought. Um, so, uh, we'll talk about that at the end. But bear in mind, this is a very budget-friendly uh, AR-15. So yeah, I wanted to check it out. I know that um, times are hard and people don't have a lot of money to spend on certain things. So this is why I got this in to see if it was worth your hard-earned cash. So yeah, let's check it out. Let's start at the back. About the back. Let's start at the back. Um, it does come with the very basic furniture that you would expect on a very budget-friendly rifle. Now, the good thing is you can buy this, see if you like it. If you do, you can always upgrade this stuff if you, I mean, you don't have to, but if you wish to upgrade this stuff down, down in the future, maybe you have a little more funds available or something like that, you can do that. Very simple to do um, and not too expensive. But the furniture it comes with is this standard buttstock right here. And it does have, doesn't have a rubber butt pad or anything like that. OG sling attachments right here, excuse me, it has the OG sling attachments right here and here to attach your sling. It is obviously adjustable. You know, it's just that this the really standard uh, stock that comes with, with the AR-15s. Now you do have a mil spec buffer tube right here down to your castle nut. The castle nut has been staked once and the staking looks really good, which is nice to see. Uh, moving along to the top here, because I'm going to get asked, I know somebody will ask me. Uh, this is the Vortex PST uh, 1 and 6. Uh, with a worn QD skeleton mount. I still genuinely believe this is the best 1 in 6 scope for the money. You can pick these up for under $500, which I think is a bargain for that optic. Anyway, uh, now moving, let's just take this off so you guys can see the gun a little better. So moving, you have, uh, again, you have the standard charging handle right here. It's not ambidextrous or anything like that. Again, if you decide down the line you want to upgrade it, you know, knock yourself out. But it, it works just fine. Um, no problems with that. Upper and lower receiver are 70, 75 T6 aluminum. And you have everything is bog standard. You have your brass deflector, dust cover, uh, your Ford assist, your mag release right here. Moving on to the other side, you have your bolt catch and release, and you have your your safety right there. One of the nice things I do like that comes with it, it does come with an enhanced trigger guard. I don't like straight trigger guards. If you watch the channel, you'll know that. Um, I do like these enhanced ones with the curve. Um, they just make me happy. Um, it will come with a 30 round magazine, to state the pen, obviously. Um, but if you live in a free state, it will come with a third round mag. Uh, let's see if there's any play between this upper and lower receiver. Yeah, it's a little bit of wheel in there. Now, just to be clear, it doesn't affect functionality functionality in the slightest. It's just something I like to do to see if there's any play. There's just a little bit in there, but it does not affect the gun. So do not worry. It's just something I like to check out. Um, okay, let's move down to the trigger. No spec trigger. You got pretty much no take up, maybe like a millimeter. Right there, that's your take up. And hell if I take the safety off. <laughs> let's do that again. A little bit, you got a millimeter of take up. Got, you know, it's a decent break. And then you got the reset, a little bit of let out, and that thunk right there. Again, it's a mil spec trigger. It works just fine. Uh, no problems there. Has a slightly flared um, magwell right there, which is, again, very typical of any AR-15. You have a 1913 pick rail all the way along here up the top. And actually on the upper receiver part right here, it does have T markings up to here. And then we lose those T markings further up, but that's okay. Now, the handguard, it does have some anti-rotation tabs on either side. So once you put this handguard on and you screw it, it will not rotate. And that is designed so if you have 
any kind of uh, like a, a front iron sight or you know if you put a, a laser or a D-ball, I don't know, anything you want to put on here that's an aiming device, you won't lose the point of impact aim if because the um, because the handguard won't rotate with those with those anti-rotation tabs on either side of the handguard that sits on top of the upper receiver. So nice to have those in there for sure. So coming to the handguard, you'll notice that you have M-lock slots all the way around there. Tons and tons of room to add whatever you would like. Uh, certainly not short on options uh, on rail space, so very nice. Um, the actual handguard width feels very good. I have medium-sized hands, um, and I can get a, a very nice C-clamp on there. It feels very good in hand, so it's a great size for me personally. Um, below the handguard, we do have a carbine-length gas system. Um, I do prefer a mid-length gas system, which would sit obviously a little further up, smooth the gun out and the action out a little bit. Um, the carbine length obviously functions just great. It will just come down to personal preference, but it, again, you know, your gun will run just fine. Um, but this is a carbine-length gas system. Okay, under the handguard also we have a 16 inch barrel. It's a one in nine twist, half by, th half by 28 thread pitch, and you have a bird cage on the front right here. Now, um, let's go ahead and open up and check out the bolt carrier group real fast. So once you, you get your AR-15, you should always really pull this out and check your staking. Make sure it's been done properly on your gas key right here. Now the staking looks really good. No problems there. You want to check for blemishes. Anything that looks weird shouldn't be there, um, but everything looks really good, so no problem. Inside, where the bolt actually goes into the bolt carrier group, in the bolt carrier group, it is chrome lined in the in this side there, so that inside there, so that's nice also. So very good. All right, so we are back together. Uh, let's talk about shooting it. I'm about 300 rounds, just my initial 300 rounds through a gun to get a feel for it. Um, it feels just like any other really AR-15. Um, kind of on the, you know, it's not the it's not the smoothest AR-15 you'll ever shoot, but it certainly functioned perfectly fine, uh, no problems whatsoever. Um, so very good. The you know the overall construction and the quality for the money seems very good. And again, I'm still going to touch base on that price in just a second. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to add is an accuracy test. Um, where I go to a indoor 100 yard range. I have the results here. I'm gonna change the camera angle around so you guys can get a nice close look up at this and we'll go over the measurements, so bear with me. All right, so let's take a look at the results here. So first of all, uh, we did it with the PMC 55 grain. Um, and just take a look at what we got here. 100 yards, 50 yards. I mean, you're talking one and a half. One and a half. The widest one there is two inches. Now some caveats to um, when you're shooting and trying to do some accuracy testing. Obviously it can depend on the shooter, it's going to, which is me unfortunately. It's going to depend on the ammo that you're using um, and the conditions and things like that. So you may get better groupings than myself. Um, so just take this with a pinch of salt just to give you an idea. You can notice this is the 100 yards over this side. Uh, you're talking two and a half there. And just under two there. So it actually did pretty dang good with the 55 grain at 100 yards. So I wasn't too disappointed with the 55 grain. Now, we are going to go on to the AAC ammo, 75 grain. Actually, I... Some, I was filming a whole bunch of uh, different ones um, and one of the things I realized is I should be using different colors so it stands out a little better so I apologize this looks extremely messy which it is. Um, so let's take a look here. These ones are 100 yards and up here is my, my 50 yards. So you can see with 100 yards it did open up a little bit um, to just over 3 inches just under three inches there. And then with the 50 yards, I got some really nice grouping right here. And then I did, again, you know, depending on shooter, we did get, I did get a little open up a little bit, which was probably my fault, to about two and a half inches at 100 yards. So still not terrible. Um, you know, they, it's not not bad. At, um, it's not the best, but it's not bad. Okay, so this is a hundred yards. And you can see I've done this. Hopefully, you'll see the color difference. Um, I've done here. Blue is the hundred yards, and the green is fifty yards. Now, this is using the PSA Saber ammo, seventy-five grain. I got some great results with my LMT using this. Um, this one didn't unfortunately go as well as I would hoped. You can see these are the hundred yards right here. So it did open up quite a bit. Now it makes sense with the barrel twist being one and nine. Um, and this is being heavier ammo. Um, so we're at four and a half inches right there. Just under five inches right there. 50 yards, you're at, I, pull, I, I pulled this one for sure. 
but so I'm not going to include that because I know I pulled that one. So one and a half inches, just over one inch. Um, so at 50 yards, it did reasonably, definitely reasonably well, and then it got out to 100, and it started to open up um, just a bit. Again, that could have been me, but that's my findings. All right, so what is my final thought? Well, let me tell you the price, and then you can judge for yourself. Now, these are typically going to cost you more than what I paid for it, um, but I paid $369 for this gun. I think that for an Air 15 is a bargain. I think the overall fit and finish is really good. Everything seems to be staked really well. Um, the fit and finish seems good. Again, you know, I, I yeah, for the money, I don't think you're going to beat it. And this, oh, and I did forget to mention the barrel is chambered in 5.56, so you can shoot 5.56 or 2.3 out of the barrel. Um, but overall, I don't think you'll, you'll get much better for the money. Um, it's a very good sale price. So if you're looking for a budget AR-15, um, definitely check out this Delton. Um, I don't think you'd be disappointed. Anyway, all right, folks, that is it from me. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please ask them below. I'm always happy to help out wherever I can. And that's it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.